Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. So this week we're going to talk about a product I just bought and I thought, well, maybe I'll share it with you in case it's something you can use. So this is an M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure and it holds two NVMe drives. So the beauty of this is you can use it, put two of them in there. One could be from your current operating system. The other one could be a blank and you could clone them. Okay, clone from your target to the source using your cloning software. So as long as this is recognized, which it will be, uh, you'll be able to do that. I'll show you all that, show you an unboxing, what it looks like. I'll give you an idea of the pricing, which was pretty good actually. I think it was like 40 bucks. So there, I just told you. It was about $40 and that was taxes in. And that was off from Amazon. So I'll show you the product. You can just have a look at it and uh, order it if you want to. I get no link, no affiliate anything from it. I don't, I don't have an affiliate store, nothing like that. I chose not to. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll show you the product and maybe this is something you can use. So let's do a quick unboxing, have a look at it, and then show you that it's recognized on the system. And then if you want to use it for cloning M.2 drives, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to get it open. So you can see the name of the company. I can't pronounce that. Uh, I'm going to say Fix Zero. And of course, that's what it looks like. And so we're going to get it out. Okay, so let's have a look at it. And quickly get it out. Should be pretty straightforward, I would imagine. Oh, okay, well, it's upside down, but that's okay. We'll get there. It's got a little manual how to use it. it has two included USB-C cables to Type A, and you can pull this apart, and becomes Type C to Type C. Nice little things, of course. Because, like I say, it's upside down, but you do get uh, screws from the two screws if you need it. Now it's supposed to be toolless, so I don't know why you would need that, but you have these that go over your M.2s. If you need it, again, I've never you needed those. And you have thermal pads. All right, so you have two of those because you're going to have two M.2s. So that's everything you get in the box. So again, we have our device, two thermal pads, these. So I'll put an M.2 in here just to show you how it works and figure out how all this here works. And of course, these plug in is pretty simple. And that's the name of the company. So let's have a further look at the actual product and uh, get some M.2s in there. Okay, so in order to insert your M.2s, so I've got one from Team Group here, it's a two terabyte, and one from XPG. Now, the one for XPG has its own little heat sink kind of going on with the thermal pad, so I got this for a PS5, but uh, I didn't really need it. It was a spare, but anyhow, moving on. So you can see your device has two USB-C connectors here, and on the other end, you've got these little gadgets here. Let me show you that. So basically what you're going to do is you push on this, pull it over. And what that's going to allow is you to push this through here and pull it out. All right, so you can insert your first M.2, which is going to go right here. So I'm going to take the thicker one because I want to see how it goes in. So a little bit of an angle. And push down and these are supposed to be tools but so much for that and these are the little rubber stoppers we're going to use to hold it in place so i will get that out of the package okay so all i did is push in this little stopper here until you push it down far enough and then it just kind of locks in place and then your drive is installed so then all you have to do uh, now i guess you could you could use this and put it on. Don't know if that's necessary, but you could put it on. Maybe it helps with the heat a little bit and then put it into your device. So I'm going to see if that works. So putting it in my device, just put it in like so. I don't know if that's going to fit in there yet. Then it just clicks in place. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Again, it gives you four of these little stoppers. All right. So, very easy to get it to go in. Like I say, you take your little thing here, slide it over. And when you slide it over, this will push out. 
pulls out. Now you're ready to put your second drive in. So like I say, put your M.2 in first. Maneuver this just to see that little, how it goes in the middle. Now it's kind of weird, but and you just push it down. So it does click in place eventually. I don't particularly care for this way of doing things. Um, takes a couple tries to get it in, but then you're ready to put it in your device. See? Clicks up. That's why I don't like it. It works. It'll stay in place for the most part, but you shouldn't have to do that. They can't call it toolless when you have to have like basically like a rubber screw to hold it in place in my opinion. But opinions vary. So take that with a grain of salt. However you choose to do it. But it will still accomplish the goal that you want to do which is for cloning or just having two uh, M.2 drives in one location as an external drive. And you can use it for that. So when you're done, connect your two USB Type C's. And whether you need USB Type A or Type C depends on whether you want to pull this cable apart, which just separates very easily. And then you have USB Type C if that's what's on your case, or if you have more of the USB Type 3, 3.0, and uh, you have two of those, or I can have one of each. Or you can only use one cable at a time and just use one on either side. You can use them independently or two at a time. Totally your call. But if you're going to clone, obviously you're going to want two of them. If you're cloning, you're going to have to make sure that you are very care careful uh, when you're looking at your software to see which one has the data and which one doesn't first in your file explorer and then determine which one is your target and your source. Don't make the mistake or you're just going to wipe all your data. So, okay, keep that in mind. I have a different video on uh, cloning your drive, so... If you have questions, you can look that up. But for now, let's hook this up to a computer and make sure it actually connects and recognizes. And uh, I'll show you a little bit more on there. Okay, so when you first plug it in, you will hear it recognize that it's plugged in. However, when you're looking in your file explorer, you don't see it. So, same as if you're going to clone a hard drive, if it was a source drive, it would be recognized because it's going to just going to show you everything and that will immediately give you what drive it is for your target for your source drive all right for your target drive it might not have ever been used so you go into your pc right click now with windows 11 they've changed it a little bit so you're going to have to go to show more options and click on manage now it comes up you're going to go to disk management when i click on this it's going to see disk 3 and disk 4. Choose the default, which is GPT, GUID, partition table. Click OK. What's going to happen now is those are going to be recognized. All right? But first you have to right click on it, go new simple volume, click next. And if you're going to use this for a particular thing, make sure you name it. All right? You give it a name. So I'm going to say just for argument's sake, we'll say source. Finish. And then you're going to need to do the exact same thing for the other drive. It takes a few seconds and then it's going to be ready to go. And then we'll show you File Explorer so you know what's going on. Okay, formatting. And in a second, this will be all done. It's taking a little longer than usual, but but I don't have to wait for that. I can go here, right click, new simple volume, click next, 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 and we'll go target. Obviously, you could do name it whatever you want it, or don't name it at all. Yeah, yeah, format disk. Okay, shouldn't normally take this long, but. It is what it is, as they say. So when the first one's done, you can see it's showing up here, local F disk. Okay. Took a little longer than it should have, but at least it did it. And uh, the other one will do the same thing. 
and then you'll see F drive and then it'll probably be G drive and then we'll be able to see what it is. Okay, so what I did is I ran across a couple problems with the cables. So I'm not sure why that happened, it just did. And I think it actually is the NVMe drive. So I switched out the NVMe drive to a uh, Samsung one that I know works. And I'll have to check out why that team group doesn't work. And uh, maybe return it for a warranty. Uh, because it should work. Anyhow, I have my F drive, which is the SSD, which I could use as a source. Which yours would have a name to it anyway, so that's fine. And this would be the target. So that way you would know this is the source where all your data is coming from. And that's where it's going to go to. Thereby, any software that you have, you're going to be able to um, clone it. Or just use it for backups or copy files to it. Or whatever the case might be. So, two drives. One obviously didn't work for whatever reason. I, I have run into that in the past. It's not that common, but it does happen. And Team Group is pretty recognizable. It's pretty reliable. So, hopefully when I contact them, I won't have any problems to replace it. If I don't fix it in the meantime somehow. So, anyway. So, we've got the dual drive for M.2s. You can now use it. You can format it. Like I say, you have to go in to this PC, right click, show more properties. This is for Windows 11. Click on Manage. Your drives will show up under Disk Management and they should pop up. Take the defaults and then rename them. So Disk 3, Disk 4. So my 980 is showing up because that was already ready. And the target drive. All right. Once you've done that in here, then they populate into your file explorer and any other program you're going to use and uh, you'll be able to copy source to target and uh, you'll be good to go all right use your software make sure you're doing one to the right thing it's copying it from the drive that has the data to the one that doesn't make sure you don't mix that up uh, and you're good to go so on that that's all you need to know it works um kind of questioning the cable actually but, but they are working right now but I had to switch them and switch out to see anything. I don't like when they have the combined cables because sometimes they just don't work for whatever reason. I think they're kind of I would prefer them to have just sent USB-C cables and maybe a com combination CA separately not the way they do it because I have found that in the past this has not worked for me then either, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. So that's pretty much it for the drive, how it works, how you can use them to clone, all that kind of good stuff. Or use them for transferring files or installing programs. I used to keep all my Steam programs on an M.2 drive. And every time I go to a different computer, I pop it in and just use it. And do it over and over and over. Alright? Something you keep in mind because It'll save you a whole lot of time. The only thing you might have to do is go into Steam and point them to the right directory so that they're there. Okay, just a little tidbit of information. Okay, so something I noticed when I was playing back the video is I tried to format one drive, which is going to be target F. When I went to do the other one, I also left it at F. And I should have changed the drive letter to G. Because I didn't do that, there was a conflict. That's what happened. Okay, so just to be clear on that point, that was me being impatient, making mistakes. Can happen to anybody, but this is what happened. Had nothing to do with the cables. It was strictly me being in too big a rush. So, make sure before you format the other one, let the first one finish. It did take a little longer than it should have, I don't know why. But, once that one finishes, Go to the other one, make sure it's got a different drive letter, because otherwise you're going to have the same problem I did. All right, so simple thing to do, simple mistake to make, but it's a lesson, and now you, you've heard it, and hopefully you won't make the same mistake. And if you make that mistake, then you're going to have to go in and give it a drive letter different than what you're already using, and then it should fix itself. Otherwise, it may never work and you won't know why. 
okay? You won't be able to initialize it. You won't get File Explorer to be able to bring it up. So these are important things to know. Anyway, quick little video. Well, okay, it's stretched on a little bit. Uh, what the device is, how to use it, some of the uses for it, storing files, backing up files, whatever. You want to put your Steam files on there for Steam for games. You can do all that kind of stuff. Neat little rig. Cost me about $34.99 on Amazon. Simple. So if you like the video, give a thumbs up. If you're new here, think about subscribing. Hit that bell for notifications for other videos as they come up. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care.